Hello, my name is Sam and welcome to my review of the Devon Graham Signature Series Glycam. I have used the Glycam now full time for almost two years now, coming up on two years, uh, and I've used it on dozens and dozens of projects uh, of various shapes and sizes and various, uh, and various conditions. So I feel like I've got enough experience now with it to, to really give a good solid opinion on it. Um, and I think I can now safely say that I do actually prefer using a Glycam, in most cases, uh, to a gimbal and uh, I'll explain why a little bit later. Assembly of the Glycam is extremely simple, it only takes about 30 seconds out of the box with the three parts that come with it for the head, the actual uh, pole with the with the gimbal on it and then the, the weights section on the bottom. It only takes about 30 seconds to put those together, assuming that you've got the weights already in place because of course once you take the camera apart um, after using it, you've got the weights on there so when you want to assemble it again for the next time, it's uh, it's all ready to go, so assuming you've got all that ready, that takes about 30 seconds and it's really easy to set up. And then getting it balanced only takes another 30 seconds or so just to quickly get that in place and, um, and yeah. When it comes to dialing in the balance for this thing, it, you can spend anywhere from a few minutes to half an hour or so really dialing in the balance. There's a lot of nice looking markings all over the, uh, all over the, the pole and uh, on, the, on the base plate as well. Um, so you can really, you can note down your exact settings so, so for next time you can do it really, really simple, really, really, uh, really quickly. I've used this mainly with my C100, uh, which seems to be the sweet spot, I think, weight-wise uh, for this Glycam. Any more, you're really going to start struggling with your arm all day. I already struggle a little bit with the C100. Uh, if you use it all day, your back and your, and your forearm does does start to hurt. So if you do want to go to bigger setups like a RED or some other small cinema camera like that, then you probably will want to invest in some sort of uh, mechanical uh, spring arm just to really take the, the weight off of your, your arm and back. Unless you're someone like Devin Graham himself, then uh, yeah, he's a bit of a machine, so I don't know how he does that, uh, wielding that massive setup with a RED all day. Um, but hey, if you're up for it, you're up for it. But um, in my experience, it's probably not a good idea. Of course, the smaller cameras as well, it's perfectly usable. I've got four weights on either side, four of the included weights on either side, so eight in total for the C100. Uh, for, and then most lenses that I have work well with that weight setup. And of course, th that gives you a lot of room for um, going to a much lighter setup. So if you have a small DSLR or even probably a point and shoot, if you, if you really wanted to use one of those, you'd probably use that as well. Um, but if you're going to be spending 700 pounds on a, uh, on a Devon, Devon Graham, Signature series Glycam, I'm not entirely sure you'd be using a point and shoot, but um, you know, the option's there if you want it. I think one of the main things, the main differences about a Glycam or a Steadicam like this compared to a gimbal is uh, probably the skill ceiling and the and the skill, the starting skill uh, required to learn it. In most cases you can pick up a gimbal and in a few minutes you can be getting really, really good shots. Uh, but with a Glycam you really need to be getting it about half an hour to an hour earlier and just having a play around with it to really get a feel of it uh, because there is a lot more it's a lot more manual work to, to get good shots but when you do get good shots they are they are very smooth you are going to want to spend a good amount of time getting your feet movement correct because uh, getting that uh, that heel toe slow movement is um, is very, very important with this if you don't it, you can easily get shaky footage and your footage can just have that slight wobble in it which doesn't isn't quite um, isn't quite ideal uh, another thing you'll want to do uh, if, you, if you're planning on doing a lot of running shots, that requires quite a bit of um, quite a bit of skill, I think, in my experience anyway, especially with a heavier camera. Uh, so you do need to uh, spend a good amount of time just really trying to get that skill down and really um, practicing those uh, those fast movements. If you're doing a lot of fast movements, uh, uh, because otherwise the last thing you want is um, a client getting annoyed at you because you're having to spend about. 10 shots, 10 times trying to uh, rerun a shot just to get get it perfectly right. You want to be able to get it pretty much every time. Um, so yeah, make sure you get that practice in. The advantages of a, uh, a Glycam or a Steadicam like this is, uh, is quite obvious though, I think. You don't have to worry about any battery life in this. It's a bit more reliable in most cases. Of course, in the early days of gimbal, electric gimbals, they were, they were quite unreliable. Not quite the case now, but... Um, and of course, with a Glycam like this, uh, you have the ability to add a a springed extension arm so you can really run some pretty heavy rigged out cameras. When it comes to gimbals you can't really do that. Of course there are bigger gimbals available to you for bigger cameras 
but they are very very expensive um so as a as a relatively inexpensive option something like a glycam with an with a uh with an extension arm for bigger cameras can be a better option you can argue i think there is an argument for that these gimbals these um Glycams, uh, steady cams are a bit smoother, or can be a bit smoother than uh, than in electric gimbals. But I think that was true a few years ago. Now software on gimbals is a lot, lot better. So uh, the ability to get um, the capability of getting smoother shots is a lot easier on gimbals now. But with Glycams, um, yeah, it's most of the time you're going to get a very, very, very smooth, for lack of a better word, glidey shot compared to a gimbal. Uh, you just get that kind of hovering. Um, kind of floaty look which you don't tend to get with a gimbal uh, most of the time anyway. Back to talking about this exact glide cam, the gimbal on it is extremely good so it survives the spin test incredibly well. It's all weather, water and dust resistant or sealed so taking it into harsh environments whether it be in the desert with dust storms or somewhere extremely cold or wet uh, you shouldn't have any problems. Granted I have been quite careful with this and I haven't really taken it in too many um, harsh environments so I can't attest to this too much but um, I know that that is the case. Other than that build quality is perfect and everything you could ask for it certainly lives up to the price tag that comes with it. However does that price tag make it worth it in 2020 slash 2021? Well uh, it depends as usual. So I'd say if you're using this Glycam with uh, cinema style bodies being a C100 or uh, Reds or um, ARRI cameras, something like that, then I would certainly say yes. With equivalently priced gimbals, um, you are still going to be struggling in a lot of cases uh, to get those larger cameras to work properly, so therefore you're going to get um, more reliable usage really out of one of these um, Steadicam Glycams uh, than you with them with uh, these smaller handheld gimbals. Of course, the bigger two-handed gimbals, uh, they are a lot more expensive, um, more expensive than the Glycam, so therefore, um, those would be a good option, but of course we're talking about the price tag, or the price range of a Glycam. However, if you're using something like a DSLR um, and not a cinema style body, then I would say probably not worth getting one of these for the price. Um, the performance of these smaller gimbals for these smaller cameras now are just so, so good. Um, and the price performance, price, the price to performance for that, um, for those are, are perfect really. So I probably wouldn't go for one of these if you're using a DSLR. Another reason for using one of these uh, compared to a gimbal is that you can rig out a camera on this. You can put everything you need, whether it's a ter deck, your uh, wireless follow focus systems work very, very well on these, uh, on these glide cams with rails and whatnot. Um, and rigging out a camera with rails and all that just isn't possible on, on normal, um, normal gimbals. So that's an advantage as well for, um, for something like this. So yes, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the thumbs up down below and comment if you have any questions. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.